Hi, this is The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi, and today I'm very excited because we have a beauty specialist with us today, and she is amazing. Her name is Katrina Fay, and before we begin, I just want to give a quick shout out to dmaworld.com. They are a marketing consultant agency, and what they do believe in is that they want to help the little businesses grow to become big businesses, but they don't want to see them get scammed by these big marketing companies that take away their money and they don't get any results. So check out dmaworld.com where they fight for the young and the little businesses and they want to make them grow. So check them out. They have a lot to offer. And to get back to our very special guest, Katrina Fay, I am so excited to have you on the show. We had a, a conversation before the show and you are truly amazing and the knowledge you have is outstanding. So why don't you tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do? Because it's it's truly amazing. Hi, Stacey. Thank you. It's, I'm really grateful to be in this conversation with you today. Um, as we are just talking about, uh, there's a lot of misconceptions out there for people right now about how do the facial mechanics work? I mean, what creates a beautiful face? And we have this cliche that circulates that beauty is only skin deep, as though it's superficial. And it's just about what's on the surface level. Yeah. And so our booming beauty industry is raking in millions every year with Botox and fillers and yeah. facelifts. And it's all about skin and it's all about teeth with Invisalign and braces. But what it, it all really misses the point because the thing that accentuates a face yeah. and a great example yeah. is a supermodel's face celebrated for beauty. They have big, high cheekbones and prominent eyes, uh, big, broad smiles with spaced evenly teeth that scaffold the lips and pout them out nicely and the bone structure that they've developed throughout their life is the thing we're celebrating them for and it it enhances every feature of the face I unfortunately had to learn this the really hard way because back in 2016 my facial structure actually collapsed inward oh, wow. and I had really bad dentistry that skewed the bite to the point where one cheekbone had sunk in Oh, wow. uh, my eyes had asymmetry. It, it threw the jawline off. Wow. So it was quite devastating at the time. And because back then orthotropics and my functional therapy were on the extremities of health and beauty, I didn't know about them. Yes. The main message from orthodontists was, well, there's not much we can do about it. Like you had slightly crooked teeth and that's a genetic thing. Faces are 100% governed by genetics which is not true. There's no right. evidence to support that faces, their form are 100% genetic. Yeah. Uh, what we're seeing is that the human craniofacial size has consistently reduced in size. Yeah. Uh, since agriculture was introduced and we, we started really relying on wheat and doughy foods to yeah. get these large settlements of people fed in a one geographic location where they're yeah. not hunting and gathering and migrating with the food source it's right. like okay let's just pump out lots of bread and yeah. then it turns into pasta etc but in the last century the last 100 years what we've done to food with this ultra processing of food we're no longer giving the face the exercise through long sustained hard chewing yes and this is what works the facial bones is this mechanical input by breaking down food before we had graters juices uh, blenders microwaves all of the food processing was ha happening with the face yeah and, and the human jaws are meant to be grinding down food right so I had to learn a lot about how our faces work in order to actually grow back my face into alignment yeah and I learned about orthotropic orthodontics where we right. can stimulate the jaws to grow larger. Right. So to help people understand back to the supermodels, they've got a very prominent mid face. Yes. And the mid face is one structure. It's called the maxilla bone. Okay. And we call this the beauty bone. The beauty bone is here. I've got a little example for you. It's the yeah, hello. Max, <laughs> it's essentially I love it. The cheekbone runs to the base of the eye socket, the top dentition. It contains the nasal passage. It has the roof of the mouth, and of course, the cheek and eye socket on the other side. Right. 
humans are meant to develop this to its full genetic size. And when this yeah. occurs, all of the teeth have room to come in straight. Right. This is why we're seeing crooked teeth is people don't have the environment and lifestyle to grow their upper jaw to full size. So it houses all of the teeth in a straight row. But unfortunately, the dental community has been saying, oh, well, you better need braces because you've inherited dad's big teeth that don't fit inside mum's small jaw. Mm -hmm. And this is why you have crooked teeth. Right. There is no evidence there's a gene for crooked teeth. Yeah. It's just someone made it up and ran with it. Mm -hmm. So we now know, looking at the evidence, the evidence has been there for a few decades now. And you trawl through scientific journals and you learn about how do we grow the facial bones. Yeah. It's a chewy diet. It's a chewy diet. It's using the orofacial muscles well. So when these muscles for chewing and masticating are firm and the tongue places well inside the skull, yeah, then this is pushed out and broad and you get that more oval shape or the model's high cheekbones. I believe many people out there have this huge potential for natural beauty, but they just haven't realised it because something's gone wrong developmentally from childhood. Yeah, uh, I'll give you another really clear example aside from how we process everything and make it soft and liquefied. Yeah. When we rear children, we're giving them pacifiers all day long. Yes. Having the pacifier in the mouth takes the tongue from its natural resting position, which is suctioned on the roof of the mouth, right? where it's this natural internal pressure inside the skull that pushes the bones out and holds the top dentition broad and the roof of the mouth broad when you've got a thumb or a pacifier there all day long the tongue has to sit below that so you don't have this internal counter pressure to the outside muscles in the form of the tongue yeah it's not there so it actually lets the face sink in and we get a narrow airway and we get a lot of facial flaws the eyes narrow in because the eye sockets have sunk the teeth collapse in the nose either gets looked too up and short because the cavity inside is up and vaulted Ah. or we get a a bent septum, the septum, because everything's squishing into the middle. We get that hook defect with a bump here and a pull down on the cartilage because the bones aren't coming forward to push everything out and help them stay up. Wow. Wow. This has been the missing link for people, but they don't know where to turn. They've gone to a plastic surgeon and they say, I think I need a septoplasty. I don't breathe very well. I've yeah. got, you know, I don't like the hump on my nose now. Can we do something about that? They come out. I speak to so many people. They come out afterwards. They say, oh, I've had a septoplasty, but it didn't really fix the airflow. I still don't breathe well yeah. because they're still really high and vaulted inside under the nose. That cavity is, is tiny. It's not until we can use orthotropics with this oral device worn in the mouth that gradually widens and stimulates the roof of the mouth to open and push this mid-face out. The roof of the mouth is the floor of the nasal cavity. The Mm -hmm. palatine bones make up 70% of the nasal cavity. So we want this to come out like that if we want to breathe well. Wow. I've known so many people that have had uh, deviated septum and they've gotten the surgery and they ended up getting their, be- their breathing became worse after the surgery. And they, oh. doctors had told them, oh, you're going to breathe better, blah, 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 blah. Your snoring will stop and this and that will open your passageway. Your breathing will be so much better. And I, I would, I would probably say like 99% of the people that I spoke to that had that procedure done all said mm. to me that their breathing was worse after the procedure was done. Oh my gosh, those poor people. And this just reduces quality of life so significantly because when we don't breathe well, we don't sleep well. Yeah. And you're dealing with daily stress and fatigue. It's very very hard to make healthy lifestyle choices when you're feeling depleted all the time. Yeah. Some people can't feel refreshed after a night's sleep because they have a really small nasal cavity and they have a very small oral cavity. Yeah, And these are the traits that we subconsciously haven't liked in the human face. It's the attractive face with the big maxilla has a big nasal cavity and yeah. a larger oral cavity. These are right. healthy traits. It's the reason why anything innately beautiful 
is that way to us because it has health benefits. Right, right. And we've been masking, we've been masking our flaws with plastic surgery. Yeah. So we we've, we've believed anyone with like a two square jaw um, or a two weak jaw that's merging with the neckline, they go and get orthognathic surgery that either that cuts their jaw and yeah. pins it into a new position, matches up with their maxilla, the top jaw better. Right. And yeah, their profile improves and they probably would be happy about that. But by understanding, if they did understand that any discrepancy between the jaws creating yeah. that problem, it's actually yeah. this area was too narrow. The maxilla didn't grow. So this has this problem of how do I meet with the top jaw? Yeah. It's either jutting out too far or it's tucking in behind and yeah. having this vertical growth pattern. So when we cut the mandibles, though it's the mandibles fault for yeah. the aesthetic issue. Yes, you've made the person look a bit better, but you've left this diminished and their airway is diminished. So that yeah. person's going to probably have sleep apnea, if not now, later on, when yeah. everything just stinks as we age. Yeah. Um, we, yeah, we're leaving people sick with plastic surgery. It's just camouflaging an issue with right. airways. Yeah. So what does a person do? So how does a person, like, what would be the first step to being able to you know, have better health, have better bone structure, have better breathing, you know, what if a person really wants to enhance their beauty and, 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 and improve their overall health, what would be the first thing mm. that you would suggest to somebody? Absolutely. The first thing I would suggest is looking up a functional orthodontist. This, anyone who goes by a philosophy of orthotropics. Yeah. So tro tropic means growth. Mm. I didn't know. I didn't know that. Also, a function. case of course is yeah. like the oral cavities. So, yeah. So, orthotropics is this emerging field of orthodontics that's helping the face grow to its genetic maximum. So that yes, the teeth will align better, but everything on the face aligns well when our bone structure is large. Yeah. The eye sockets are pushed forward and out. As I said, the lips improve. The cheeks become prominent. Some people only have a minor um flattening or weakness that maybe myofunctional therapy can yeah. work wonders with if they find a good myofunctional therapist and that corrects their mouth breathing a lot of people because they're narrow here as i said they have to open their lips and breathe compensate with oral breathing but by doing that the tongue has to drop off the roof of the mouth into the lower jaw so the air passes down the throat as soon as we have our tongue in the lower jaw all day we're now robbing the mid face of that internal pressure that kept it open and large yeah. that gave us the better looks and gave us the open airway. So correcting that with a myofunctional therapist could be enough for some children and adults, but some people are so high and vaulted in their nasal cavity that they're going to need a device from an orthotropics orthodontist. That's going to gradually widen that area, stimulate new bone and flatten it and lower the, the roof of the mouth. And everything just opens up beautifully on the face. Uh, I would love people to see my before and after photos. Yeah. Because it's, it's amazing what I could achieve remodeling the face without ever stepping foot into a plastic surgeon's office. Because I initially went to surgeons and I said, my face has been really damaged. What can we do? And they said, well, we can shave down the bone on this side and maybe we'll put an implant here. But as I said, I didn't want to do that because it would have stopped me ever in the future being able to correctly align my structure. Yeah, yeah. And I knew putting an implant here and shaving this down is only going to make this smaller. And my face had gotten smaller. Yeah. And it wasn't going to fix up my eyes. It probably wasn't going to adjust the lips into better positions. So uh, when I discovered this, uh, it changed my life, not just getting my aesthetic back but it, it yeah. probably made me better than I was before the damage because this right. is larger right. now um the health benefits is unlocked when I dove into this topic for seven years I thought this whole disrupted breathing we're in yeah this is doing damage to people uh we have here's an example we have skyrocketing ADHD now in children right because the the way we classify it is, you know, ADHD has a genetic component, but right. we're not testing children. We're just looking at symptoms and yeah. saying this looks like ADHD. 
because children, when they don't sleep well, because a lot of them are narrow and they're not breathing well, they don't look like adults who are fatigued and, yeah. and slowing yeah. down. They ramp up. Yeah, they ramp they're up. They're agitated. They find it really hard to concentrate. They're disruptive. Their mood is irritable. And that's why there's all these fidget toys now in schools because yeah. kids are finding it hard to concentrate. This is how their brain works when it's starved of oxygen. Mm. We, when uh, I'll just quickly let people know how serious this is. If you're relying on the mouth for breathing, you're only drawing air into the chest. It looks thoracic like this. It's this anxious style of breath. Yeah. It's only getting air to the top of the lungs. Our normal way to breathe is only through the nose. And when we do that, it looks like this. The tongue is high in the mouth and we go. And the air travels down deep into the diaphragm, a long, yeah. slow breath, plenty of time to extract that oxygen before a slow exhale releases all the carbon dioxide. Yeah. And the system yeah. continues nicely. When we chest breathe, the body's always trying to get in a bit more air because right. the breaths are too rapid to get carbon dioxide out and enough oxygen in yeah and because they've skipped this filtration system this is a perfect design by nature we filter the air we humidify it but we also have a parasinus on either side that puts nitric oxide in with the air and this is our body's natural dilator for the circulatory system wow so it opens up all wow. of the veins passing the oxygen around the body where it's needed really efficiently yeah if we don't get if we don't get nitric oxide you don't get it through the mouth Right. Your veins stay narrow. You have narrow circulatory system. Your heart's already, it's trying really hard to pump whatever oxygen it did get around the body. So yeah. heart rate goes up and heart rate goes up. Uh, respiration rate always follows suit. So the whole body's on this sympathetic stress response. Yeah. This stress response from the nervous system trying to get everything to work well right starved of oxygen yeah. yeah obstructive sleep apneas going through the roof it's actually a really common problem today people needing CPAP masks at night yeah. this isn't normal no this isn't normal. this is people not developing well how do you get so off those masks you know like I know so many people that need that mask now to sleep so many people yeah. have sleep apnea you know like you know it's it's like it's common now it's not even like you know it's not even something that you hear once in a blue moon. You hear so many people talking about either insomnia or they're talking about sleep apnea. And, and, and it's like, it's become the thing. It's become the, the new norm, you know, because so many yes. people suffer from this. Yes. Everybody knows someone, a partner or a brother or someone who's sleeping with this mask. And it's, you know, snoring is related to this, but sometimes it happens silently and people don't even know that they have it. Yeah. Children now, yeah. children have sleep apnea. My children um, had tongue ties, which mm -hmm. means they weren't breathing well because they were oral breathing. Oh. So they were narrowed here. The tongue, okay. tongue couldn't get high and open up the face. And so they've had to have adenoid tonsillectomies and things to help open up the airway, but that's not enough. You've got to open up the floor of the nasal cavity by stimulating the mouth roof to grow. We can do this at any age. We can do it as adults. There's studies showing that people with obstructive sleep apnea can have palate expansion and experience better airflow. And when we open up the roof of the mouth, we're actually making the oral cavity bigger and the tongue is able to reposition high in the mouth, moving away from the lower oral cavity. Yeah. What's happening for people is they're narrow here, they're mouth breathing, they're narrow in the mouth, the tongue doesn't have enough room, so it's pushed back into the throat and, they go, and they're gasping for air and it sounds yeah. like snoring. Yeah. They're having an apneic episode, so they're starved of oxygen and they cannot thrive this way. No. You cannot thrive like that. And then you see the puppy eyes start to develop and you can see the, the fatigueness in their face because they're not getting that oxygen they need. That's right. And plenty of people out there have had tooth extractions because back in the day it was crooked teeth are genetic. We'll pull some teeth out and put braces on. Yeah. Fortunately, they took a diminished face and they made it smaller. Yeah. Because they took people's teeth out. Right. It was very common to do that. Yeah. I was, I was very I thought, oh, you've got extra teeth. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. No, no, no. 
I I I was just gonna say it's it's surprising because in you know if you you didn't didn't mention it I would think oh you know your your bone structure has developed you know it, in, unless you're doing like you know cosmetic you you don't have the opportunity to restructure and widen your bones but it's pretty amazing that you bring that up you know so any yeah. age any age can yeah. actually naturally restructure their bone structure and and have better breathing quality and have uh, better overall health because you're breathing you know you need oxygen to live you need a, a good significant oxygen amount of oxygen to function your your focus your clarity everything you know like we talked mm -hmm. about adhd it affects everything mind body and soul everything is affected by the way we breathe and the amount of oxygen our body intakes on a daily basis Yes. It's the one thing we can't do more than a couple of minutes without. It's oxygen. It's so yeah. vital to how we live our life. And it just permeates everything we do, how sociable we are, how much athletic stamina we have, how right. easily we can concentrate. We need oxygen yeah. to perform well. And people suffer in silence. They don't realize they actually can't breathe properly. Right. And it shows on their faces. We have narrow faces now. Yeah. We need to have a large mid face. And it's the reason we like that trait in supermodels and attractive people. They've got a large mid face. Those people are healthy. Yeah. They're able to thrive. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's something we need to get out into the mainstream so people realize what their options are. Yeah. A lot of people turn to plastic surgery because they're getting like droopy skin and nasal label folds even in their twenties. Yeah. I've got thin lips or all of the things and they're going and plumping up their skin thinking the skin is the aging problem. It's the bones haven't grown large enough. Yeah. And diet's so soft that we're not chewing hard enough foods to develop the facial structure. If you had strong bones underneath, your skin would just smooth out. You know, wow, we wouldn't yeah. have 20 year olds trying to plump up cheeks to remove this or like hold the lips out because they'd have broad dentition. So really, we have to really focus too on our eating habits. There are probably certain foods that are healthier and better for our body, yep. not just, you know, for other things, but in our bone structure as well to enhance our bone structure. So we can have better oxygen and we can have, you know, overcome maybe, you know, different illnesses better, you know, prevent chronic illness and, and so forth. Absolutely. That's right. I've tried to get my son and he loves it. Now we have this shop called Biltong Boss mm -hmm. so feed, eating Biltong. It's a dehydrated meat and it's savory and salty and he loves it. I pop it in his lunchbox it's the best workout for the face to yeah. develop his jaws. Developing his jaws is going to develop his airways. Right. It's the same structure. Um, years ago, before I really cottoned onto how much of an effect diet had on our growth, yeah. I used to give my kids green smoothies every single day because I wanted them to have nutrients and they didn't want to eat whole food vegetables. Yeah. And so, I mean, they still do have green smoothies, but I'm not relying on that all the time exactly. because- I'm robbing them of the ability to chew. Yeah. So I can't have them getting their meal and nutrients through a straw all exactly. the time because it's only meeting half of their needs. Nutrition, right. yes. Development of the face and airways, no. Exactly. Exactly. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's it, people don't realize that diet really has, it, it's very vital, you know, and, and even me, I, I had like a locked chore. I would always click and click and click. And when I changed my diet, you know, that locked door just simply just went away. It was just, you know, changing my diet and moving my jaw around and giving it some exercise. It just, you know, it stopped, you know, I would have the click, 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 click. And, you know, and sometimes it would get a little locked that I could unlock it, you know, but I'd have to put pressure on it. But then just by changing my diet and doing a little draw exercises, it yeah. stopped. That's fascinating. I just, you know, looking at you, I wouldn't have known that you had jaw symptoms, but so many people today say, oh, I have TMJ problems. Yeah. Something about the clicking of the jaw or the door, jaw slipping out, it's creating pain. Yeah. And yeah. this is all related that we're having nut butter, not whole nuts. Yeah. We're having our vegetables in a dip yeah. or a smoothie or mashed. Yeah. There seems to be nut. Our culture is all about soft foods, melt in the mouth. Right. You know, or up and go, have it on the go, have something yeah. liquefied. Really just have to go back to whole foods, whole nuts, 
whole vegetables and fruits or dehydrated fruits yeah. is a great snack for kids right. um, because again it gets hard yeah. and I'll keep harping on about biltong and beef jerky because our ancestors didn't have refrigerators yeah they never pulled meat to preserve it yes and when we do that it just makes everything soft yeah. they had to dehydrate their meat by right. salting and peppering and drying it out to get the moisture out of the food right so dry it out over flame or in the sun and that lasted it preserved their meat surplus for months yeah and it was the best workout for their face and if anyone wants a really good live example of this central africans nigerians and tanzanians they don't have kitchen gadgets that whip and make everything soft they don't have fridges yeah uh so they have to dehydrate all the meat that they eat Right. And in those places, you don't see anyone with a sunken mid face, big maxilla, big, broad smiles, faces yeah. that match up perfectly, clear airways. So we we need to I mean, I don't expect people to get rid of their fridge. It's a great convenience. Um, but the household fridge did make us rely a lot on dairy products and those are some of the things worse for you. Those those are the worst things for your body. Yeah, we shouldn't be having so much dairy. I mean, I do. I love milk and my coffee and things, yeah. but we're, we're eating a lot of dairy, uh, which wouldn't have been the case before. We're eating a lot of processed meat, which we know the processed meat's no good. Right. Um, right. Yeah. So there's so many things we could dive into and how this is affecting yeah. well, how we got here, but also what are the health implications of this being narrow and not sleeping well, yeah. and not breathing well. And yeah, yeah, it's a big I, problem. It is a big problem. And and today's society, you know, people resort to surgery right away. And and insurance is in 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 the United States, there are a lot of a lot of things are covered. If you have certain conditions, you could say it's under a condition and it'll the surgery will be covered. And so people are resorting to the quick fix rather than you know, to focus in on the natural way, which is the better way. And, you know, people don't realize too, is once you get cut open and the oxygen from the outside goes inside your body, it changes the whole chemistry of your insides. And then your body changes mm. and it actually can worsen your health and cause more problems in the long run. And with cosmetic surgery, you know, it makes me angry because our society has made it, you know, you have so much, you see so many celebrities, you know, showing their cosmetic surgery and boasting mm. about it. And, you know, it's the new thing in our, in our trendy society. Yeah. But, you know, if you look at a lot of celebrities, you know, the before and after pictures, how they look before and how they look now, so many look alienated, their faces are all pushed back, their eyes are withdrawn and, and narrow, you know, they, they look, they don't even look like humans anymore, a lot of them, and, mm -hmm. or they talk and that you can't even see their, their jaw moving, you don't even see their lips moving, because they've gotten pulled back so many times, mm -hmm. you know, and there's been so yeah. many mistakes, you know, doctors have made a lot of mistakes, they don't talk about it, but you know, and you see some celebrities and I'm not going to name them on the show, but there are some celebrities that were beautiful in the eighties and nineties and early 2000. And they went and they got mm -hmm. the surgeries done and you see them now. And there was one picture of a celebrity. She came on one of the talk shows and I didn't even recognize her because the surgery changed her so much and she didn't look attractive anymore and she was a beautiful celebrity and I'm just mm. like but you see this all the time and you see you know these reality shows and these these girls getting mm. you know plastic surgery done and instead of making enhancing their beauty or making them look younger a lot of them look older or they look alien like yeah. you know and yes and it's also you know it's damaging their health because it go we go go back to the oxygen thing and and we're not moving can you know we, you talk about moving the jaw to make it your healthy bone structure imagine getting those facelifts and not even being able to it doesn't even look like your your mouth is moving when you talk because <laughs> you're so pulled back you know yeah. I can only imagine what it does to the body Oh, absolutely. And everything's frozen and there's no more expression and it's never giving the convincing results that people are hoping for. Yeah. What we can do now with developing the bone structure, we can even do this as later adults. This yeah. in terms of anti-aging would be the natural result and aesthetic people are wanting to achieve. 
Yeah. Everything sags when the bones wither away as we get older. Right. So I think it's the skin. It's not your skin. It's the weak muscles and it's the lack of bone. As we get older, the whole skeleton starts to weaken. It's called yeah. osteoporosis. The muscles weaken. It's called sarcopenia. So everything starts to sink structurally. And that's why you're getting eye bags. You're getting jowls. This is shortening. People's yeah. teeth grind down. So there's typically less distance here. Mm-hmm. You know how they get that like hooked nose and the yes. prominent chin as well? the old face. It's because this actually sunk in and so everything got closer and then everything sagged. But when we help people develop more bone through chewing harder foods mm-hmm. and, um, you know, don't freeze your muscles, use your facial muscles. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, tongue strength the tongue is always exerting pressure on the roof of the mouth yeah and that's what's going to hold this out unfortunately as we get older the tongue even weakens right when the tongue weakens it's not having that internal support and pressure to the mid face so everything can sink the maxilla is usually the first thing to go right and that's when the eyes narrow in and the nose looks too big and the chin looks too big because this went And you notice that when people become older, their voice starts to soften a lot of people and it's probably Mm. because of weakness in the tongue muscles. But do you suggest any any types of vitamins or supplements that that might be useful as you are focusing on healthy foods? Is there anything maybe, um, you know, it may be calcium or collagen? Absolutely. Like that. Calcium and vitamin C is what's going to help us keep stimulating new osteoblasts. So keep the muscles firm and anything that's going to help your muscles be strong and maintained, do those supplements. It's Mm -hmm. about bones, healthy bones. Right. We tell people, keep your bones strong as you get older. That's what you want. If you want to look youthful up here, don't neglect it. Don't just do exercise down here. This needs it too. Exactly. Now you wrote a book. Tell me about your books. I want to hear a little about what you're. I did. This is the book. It's called Beauty is Bone Deep. Learn how we grow a beautiful face. Oh, I love it. Thank you. Sustains health of the body and mind. Yeah. If we don't breathe well and we're starved of oxygen, uh, it's it's inflammation for the body and inflammation in the brain manifests as anxiety and depression. Right. Inflammation in the body manifests as a pathway to chronic illness. Yeah. Um, This is a really important portal and access point for the rest of the body. We can't neglect it. We need to now know, take what we know about growing and, and heal ourselves. And people are going to love the beauty results. They're not going to have to go to a plastic surgeon who's going to cut their face and augment it in some way and mask what the true underlying cause is maxilla mandible deficiency when yes. this narrows and sinks that's creating the nose you don't like or the flat cheeks you don't like or the jowls you don't like um or the thin lips people have to go every like two months and plump this up again you know and yeah. as you said it's just not a convincing look because if you're going to put cheek implants here on a face that doesn't have a strong maxilla the eyes are going to be too narrow but then you've got these big yeah. cheeks Yes, and so on some level we're like it doesn't look natural. No, I call it the chipmunk cheeks. <laughs> yeah, they don't go together. Everything has to get bigger, and yeah. we can do it naturally. People can naturally become beautiful. And it seems like a lot of the things that you're talking about, you could actually do from your own home. You don't have to go to a facility or a clinic. A lot of these things can be done in your own home. If you understand what your body needs and if you understand the foods or the exercises or the things that you need to do in order to maintain good bone structure, uh, it could be done home, right? That's right. If you knew my functional therapy exercises, you can now access things like this online for free or pay a good my functional therapist and they're going to teach you how to use your tongue well yeah. how to hold it well how to yeah. breathe well some people are using compensatory muscles and their swallow looks like this <laughs> have you seen a child who's sort of like yeah uh-huh. it's because the tongue they're a tongue thruster and so the tongue doesn't make contact up high and pump the palate and so they've developed compensatory ways to swallow and they strain on the neck. And oh, wow. we need to get rid of these compensations and just breathe and swallow and chew properly. Right. So you can do that from the comfort of your own home uh, by learning how to do that. You can eat 
harder foods, whole nuts, dehydrated biltong is delicious. I think yeah. it's a more ethical way to eat meat. It doesn't have as many preservatives because it's naturally preserved through drying. Right. Eat biltong. I hope that takes off rather than this like hot dog hamburger meat. Ugh. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. But if you're really narrow, like I was when my face got damaged, you can use a removable appliance if you have a skilled orthodontist in orthotropics. Okay. Um, and some they call themselves full face orthodontics, functional orthodontics, or orthopedic dentistry. Okay. Um, if you can find someone like that, that might help you get started too. Oh, that's awesome. Now, where can we find your book? So it's due to launch in January, but okay. for anyone who wants to get a copy and be the first to hear about the launch, please find me on Instagram. My page is called Growing Healthy Faces. Okay. Growing full stop healthy full stop faces. Uh, and my name is Katrina Fay uh, on Instagram too. My website is called healthyface.com. Oh, so I if that. you'd like oh. to shoot me an email, it's hello at healthyface.com. Dot com. I would love to hear from anyone who struggled with sleep difficulties, breathing difficulties, their child isn't developing well because they're having all these problems. Uh, I welcome people to get in contact and then I will shoot them the link for the book, which is due to release very soon in the new year. Oh, how exciting. You know, and it's yeah. so important too, because so many people are also resorting to sleeping pills to try to get to sleep. And they're, they're, they're using so many unnatural, you know, uh, methods to try to, you know, to get a good night's sleep. And they're not even really hidden REM when they're taking those pills, they're not getting yeah. a good night's sleep they need. And it's just, it's, and a lot of those medications are addictive whether people realize yeah. it or not, your body becomes addicted to it and getting off of it is like getting off of heroin in a sense, because you're going to get those yeah. withdrawal effects once you start to wean off of those medications, if you ever do, you know, and people be yeah. really addicted to it and they become reliant. And in their brain, they think I have to have it in order to get a good night's sleep. And so mm -hmm. it's really important to, to yeah. if, if you can retrain your breathing and, and learn how to change your, your bone structure and be able to acquire, you know, good breathing habits and get the right bone structure to, and have your bone structure, yeah. to, you know, to develop, like you're saying, it seems like mm. you, you can really change your overall health in, in so many ways. It seems really exciting. Yeah. We're not meant to be suffering like this and we can fix it without surgery we just need to stimulate ourselves to get to our genetic potential with the size of our bones and mm -hmm. open up those airways open up the airways yeah i feel for people who they've just got to have medication to get by but you're right they're not getting in REM sleep so they don't get to repair and heal and detoxify as their body wants to each right. night so right. yeah this is the answer now you open have it up <laughs> do you have <laughs> your you have your your book and you have do you provide pri provide any services to help people or do you do anything else besides you know um having authoring books is there anything else that you do that you could let the, uh, the audience know about um yeah thanks i'm bringing out some products which is a tongue training device for children to help correct their low tongue posture and it pushes the tongue up in the mouth so they can practice swallowing correctly uh, there's also other tools for strengthening the tongue muscle it's a my functional therapy tool so a lot of people actually have a very weak tongue and for kids it just helps them learn how to use it to their yeah. advantage um, and there will be these food grade silicon um, chewing balls for people who are vegan or vegetarian. They might not want to be eating dehydrated meats. They might want to have something they can carry in their purse, use it right. in the car, right. yeah. at the lights or in the shower and stimulate their face and give yeah. it exercise. Give your face a workout. Right. So that's all in the pipeline right. as well to help people have a healthy face. Yeah. And, you know, you, um, you could exercise like while you're going to work in your car. Yeah, people do it at their laptop and at, in the car. I do it in the car um, and it's easy. It doesn't take long. Do it for five or 10 minutes. It's, it's oh. a great workout. It's a lot of pressure. Oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Now, do you do any yeah. type of coaching right now or you're not? 
Uh, at the moment, I I don't have the platform, but I'm thinking about a coaching system. I'm not sure how many people are going to be coming and wanting this, but everyone's uh, please well, feel welcome to get in touch at healthyface.com. Hello at healthyface.com. And um, yeah, I'll do my best to help people because some yeah. people have more questions. They've got For sure. all these symptoms that they can't make sense of. So, yeah. Yeah. I urge people to get in contact. Wow. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. Mm-hmm. This has been amazing. Now, you, before, before we go, is there anything else that you'd like to share with the audience that you feel would be beneficial? Uh, any tips or any advice or anything that we haven't gone over? Oh my goodness. Tips and advice. Uh, there's a lot to come uh, for parents. We just need to be making sure that we're not over reliant on any technology like pacifiers or um, sip, like some of our little pouchy foods. I used to love giving my kids those on the go meals. Yeah, yeah. Some of these things disrupt the child's um, oral development. Right. And kind of makes them more susceptible to mouth breathing and, and these problems. Please, anyone who's pregnant, make sure you have your infant checked for tongue ties they're a huge problem they affect 10 percent of the population oh wow um, is okay. having having the string under the tongue too tight oh. and it prevents the child from feeding well placing the tongue high developing the face this unfortunately um my children suffered with this and it's a big long journey trying to overcome tongue ties oh, wow. so i need people to be aware of that if you're yeah. a parent yeah. Wow. I didn't know yeah, that some that. people suffer from that. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty amazing. Um, yeah. So uh, I wish everyone well. I think this is an amazing topic. It's a huge revelation and we just need everyone to know about their options. Yeah. And, and get in touch with me if they want advice on treatment plans. What should I do next? Who should I go to? Because right. as a parent, you can get passed around the system and referred off by doctors who don't really understand the underlying cause of your child's health issues or developmental issues. And you spent loads of time and money yeah. going and being handed around a system and it is exhausting for people. It's really yes. exhausting. So as a mom, I've lived this, get in touch at hello at healthyface.com so I can help you devise a plan that's going to save you so much time and money. Right. And get your kids on the path of their highest potential. Exciting for them. Yes. Yeah. I really want people to live their best life. Oh, for sure. My God, this has been great. Thank you so much, Patina, for coming on the show. I I love this. And and hopefully we'll have you back soon. And I really, you know, you have some really valuable information. And I think you, you know, just by listening to you talk and share all this knowledge, you really, you know, I think opened up people's eyes because I think people didn't realize, you know, I think a lot of people, you know, when I hear people talk, that's either they think once your genetics, it's your DNA and it's supposed to be like this and that's it. Or, you know, once you get to a certain age, it's too late to really change it. You have to, you know, mm-hmm. in order to change it, you have to go the surgery or the cosmetic route. And, you know, so really, you really open people's eyes to realize that just simple little changes in their overall living can actually make some humongous positive changes in their overall health. So that's pretty amazing. It's so amazing. Thank you so much, Stacey. I'm so oh. grateful I was able to come on the show and chat with yes. you today. Yes, it's Thank been great so to meet much. you. Thank it's you for having great. me. Oh, you're very welcome. <laughs> and I'm so glad that you came on this show. Thank you. You have Thank a great you. day. You too. All right. Bye, Bye. Stacey. Bye.